I work on a lot of products that, that apply uh, those sorts of algorithmic solutions mm -hmm. so that doctors and nurses and other members of a patient's care team can, can use the, the predictions that we're making to mm -hmm. actually improve care. If you can stand up for, for your team and, and you know, show them that they're a priority by saying, these concepts that you are telling me are important are going to be a priority for us. Okay. That's a really great way just to, to engender trust okay. between you and your and your mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that you can take through the doors here is uh, a, real, a real passion for wanting to solve these problems with us mm -hmm. because they're really hard. This is Flora and today I have Jack Moore with me. He's the product manager at Cuventus. So guess where we are today? We're at Cuventus. His expertise is in data science product. So we are really curious what that actually means. At the end, we'll also ask him about what Cuventus does and if he's hiring for a data science product manager what he's looking for. I got into product management as a result of figuring out that the uh, electrical engineering in the field wasn't exactly my cup of tea. I wasn't super passionate about it, mm -hmm. and I knew that it wasn't going to be something I was amazing at. And mm -hmm. so during my time at Pacific Gas and Electric, I found my way onto a team that was building internal data analytics and data science tools okay. for, for operators within the company. And eventually, I realized that what I was doing was called product management. And right now, you have, you're specialized in data science product. And how did you find that? How how did you get in that path? My first exposure to data science was at uh, was at Notre Dame, where I went to school. I, as an electrical engineer, ended up working. Um, my senior thesis was uh, was using computer vision, mm -hmm. um, weirdly enough, to essentially to distinguish between cars and people passing by a video camera. I thought the process was really interesting. The idea of the sort of the the breadth of applications mm -hmm. of that sort of technology was really fascinating to me. And so then when, uh, when during my time at, at Pacific Gas and Electric, I had the opportunity to start developing technologies which, which utilize data science, uh, that really caught my eye. It, at Cuventus, what, what, what kind of product that you work on? So what, what, are, what are some of the things you do with data scientists? Yeah, so uh, Cuventus is a, a technology company focused on operation software for hospitals. So we, we look to help hospitals operate more efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of what that involves is uh, things like detecting, uh, detecting things like how long a patient's likely to stay at the hospital, okay. um, how likely a patient is to readmit within, mm -hmm. within 30 days of leaving. And so I work on a lot of products that, that apply uh, those sorts of algorithmic solutions mm -hmm. so that doctors and nurses and other members of a patient's care team can, can use the, the predictions that we're making to mm -hmm. actually improve care for, for their patients. Okay, so how do you work, um, so what, what is your relationship between um, your data scientists and your engineers and also the, the hospital? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, obviously ultimately the hospital and the hospital's patients are end users and so my job is to learn as much as I can from, mm -hmm. from those users and so I spend a lot of time uh, traveling to hospitals, talking to folks on the phone, just uh, being on being on site and learning as much as I can mm -hmm. from from users because a hospital is an incredibly complex environment. In terms of engineers, my relationship with them, but my my biggest job is to is to communicate users' needs mm -hmm. to engineers and help them understand why it is that the things that we're developing are important and why they have the potential to to create real benefits in a, in that setting. I mean, I, I remember the first time I talked to a PhD data scientist mm -hmm. and, and had them attempt to communicate to me how well a model was performing and we got into a conversation about confusion matrices and precision recall curves and mm -hmm. area under the curve and, and all, all these things and I felt like uh, I felt like they were speaking a different language mm -hmm. and so I think uh, for the most part part of my part of my job is to help communicate some of those really complicated concepts of how can we tell whether or not this, this particular model or this application of data science is producing the sorts of results that we should expect. How to maintain a relationship with your engineers. So a great, uh, a great example of this is technical debt. Technical debt is all of the little things that you hack together in order to, in order to like meet a deadline or uh, it's something that you built when you had 10 users that, doesn't, that is about to break when you have 1,000 users. 
Um, it's the sort of thing where your programmer, your, your developers have to program around it. They have to tiptoe around mm -hmm. these these pieces of technical debt. And uh, and if you can if you can stand up for for your team and and you know, show them that they're a priority by saying these concepts that you are telling me are important are going to be a priority for us. Okay. That's a really great way just to to engender trust okay. between you and your and your engineering team. So basically, back up for them against maybe other management level that are pushing the timelines for them. Yeah, it's really easy for someone who doesn't sit with engineers to say, you know, we have to build this new feature mm -hmm. and we have to fix this this critical bug, and do all of these things that are very user facing. Mm -hmm. uh, tech debt isn't isn't intrinsically user facing a mm -hmm. lot of the time and by saying I understand what you mean you know Mr. business leader I understand what you mm -hmm. mean when you say we need this new feature but I'm telling you that if we take this time to you know to solve some of this tech debt we'll move a lot faster going forward other than the engineers PM probably is the one who has to deal with the most stakeholders mm -hmm. so how about cultivating a good relationship with other stakeholders so yeah, developing a good relationship with stakeholders can be tough because a lot of mm -hmm. times, a lot of times you have uh, slightly different goals. Okay. And so because of that, I think for, for myself, the best thing that I, the best technique that I've found is, is setting a common goal, uh, set a, a common kind of criteria for success. Okay. Say we're working together to achieve this outcome. Here's how we'll tell when, here's how we'll know when we got there. Okay. Uh, and being able to have that, that sort of common definition of success is a really great way to be able to go back later and, and rebase and say like just so we all remember this is what we what we decided was going to be success mm -hmm. for us and okay. it, it gives you something to when you when you're arguing over whether or not mm -hmm. you know some decision is the right one mm -hmm. you can go back and, and say you know does this support uh, the definition of success that we that we're, you know, we're all here to achieve. Okay. Talking to Jack, I not only learned what a data science product manager does, but also learned some common conflicts that product managers will face during their jobs. May that be with engineers or other stakeholders. And what Jack said was so valuable to me because he pointed out some great ways to approach these problems. Next part of this interview, Jack will share some job hunting tips for anyone who's interested in becoming a product manager in the data science product field, including skills, tools, books to look into, and potential interview questions, and what they're looking for.